Every time. Oh, not at well. Friday nights I've been doing it, and um, what's happened is recently because of the daytime daylight savings has, yeah. has changed, and so it's actually a bit more reasonable. So oh. the US markets open 11:30 at night Australian time, but previously it was 1:30 in the morning, so that was a bit tough. Wow. All right. So let's let's talk here. I first of all, are you in? I don't know if you. I know you're on the option letter. Did you do Disney? Look at it. Did you do that one? Oh, no, I missed that one. I find oh, that... Oh, God, uh, look at it. You know, because of the time difference and stuff, like I either get in them too late or, you know, exit too early. I've just got... I'm just very up and down with my trading, that's all. So do you think that the reason is because of the time zone difference? Originally I did, um, but what I think it is, um, I think it might be all right now because it's bit more in sync because it was just a bit hard because it wasn't the time difference you know like um like I said like I wake up and I'll miss your email so I'm a little bit late when I get into you know to enter then um and I'm never quite sure when I when I exit so say for example a couple of times um like I buy them too late and I exit and say for example I might miss the exit mm -hmm. there, there was a QQQ mm -hmm. It was, uh, which one did I miss? I missed the spy, that's right, because I bought it at 283 and the exit was, I think, it was 285, that's right, but I missed that exit and it went down. Mm -hmm. And the queues, which one I want, just recently, I think. Well, you know, you could put an order out to fill you at a certain thing. Have you thought about doing that? I mean, can you do that on your platform? I can. I did that once and I, I missed the entry because the stock moved up too too high so i prefer to watch it and then enter oh, okay it and high big yeah yeah so so i think it'll be all right now with the um time zones i think i just gotta get into a groove and you know where i can actually be in, in the trading room now well fridays are a good day i mean fridays typically are a good day so if that's the day you can really focus on it that's good you know um i think so. yeah yeah but I think the big thing is, uh, for me, is believing in myself. Okay. Because um, I can see the potential, and I've done it for a while, so I know lots of people make good money doing it, and I think, well, you know, why can't I do it? And mm -hmm. I think it's just the fear, because say, for example, last year, because I have lost a lot of money trying to learn it, which is fine. I mean, I don't mind learning, like, you know, because you're learning and stuff, and, and it's... And the different things I've learned to so say, for example, I like your videos on YouTube because they're actually the truth. So say, for example, when I first started trading mm -hmm. and it was a time zone, I realized it was nutrition that was really important and what you fed, you know, you got to manage your, your body and stuff. So I learned that, that mm -hmm. trying to just the energy levels right and trying to be calm. So I learned that. And then I also learned, say, for example, um, well, where I, where I was at last year, last year was just before the, you know, the Trump China war, and I lost a lot of money around that. I was probably about seven thousand. That's and then I found you, I think, in October or something. What were you doing? You and, were doing options. Yeah, I lost about seven thousand because I just didn't know how to trade, basically. Yeah. And then and and just over the years, like you know, I just think, you know, I've lost lots of money, and I think, oh, maybe I'm just in that mind frame and I, I can't seem to you know I need to just flip the switch and I know lots like yourself other successful people were losing money and then all of a sudden you you, you know something happened and you, you kind of just made lots of money so I'm persevering still learning the, you know different methods and I'm, and I'm aware I'm at the stage now where I'm where it's more yet yeah, your mind and mm -hmm. your belief systems mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so that's where I'm kind of at. So, but are you? I'm, do you not believe that you could can, can, you can do it, or you do, but you're like haven't hundred percent convinced yourself? It's like you want to believe it, but you're like you're like not a hundred percent. Like you you want to believe that you can, but you're like don't totally. 
or what? It's like I can see the potential and I, and I know people can do it. I don't know if I can just do it. I mean, I know I can because I've made wins before, but then I lose it. So maybe it's um, like a programming or something or, you know, you can't make money doing this or it's – yeah, because it actually is really easy, to be honest. I can see that. And when I do do it, I think it's – um yeah, I don't know. Maybe I don't believe myself or something or – well, now, have you, are your, how many days are you in the room? I haven't, I haven't noticed. How many days are you in the room? In the five days of the week, how many days are you in the room? Um, I'm usually like to get in Fridays. So I start off Fridays, but because of the recent, the time difference was just this week. So I might try and get in um, more often. Okay. Um, like, yeah. I definitely think if the more days you can get in the room, the better, even if it's just for, you know, the first 15, 20 minutes, you know, because of the time zone, even if it's just for that, that short time, even if you're not going to trade some of the days because it's so late if you're too tired, except for even if you're only going to trade live Friday, even if you can get in just to listen to what's going on or something for the beginning part of the morning, I think would be good for you just to help with the conviction um, even if you're not, you know, don't feel like rested enough to do it till the end of the week. Um, but as far as the options trades, are you doing any of those during the week or you're, you're only doing the calls if I make a call on a Friday or what? I know I'm doing the options. I do, I do the cues. I like the cues and the spies because I've got a bit more time, like the 15 minutes before and after okay. the market. Yes. I'm oh, sorry, 15 minutes after, not before. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I like the, um, and then where's my notes? So are um, you in these calls here? Because this is at 290, basically. Are you in the spy? Spy, I'm not the Q. I was uh, last week, but I lost some money on that one. The one that was expired, the one expired today you got out of, or the one expired last Friday? Yeah, no, the one that expires today, that one I exited yesterday, I had a small loss. And then I, and I bought another one, another Q this morning. Oh, no, sorry, I bought another Q yesterday. Yesterday I bought a Q, which was the... 185 you call yeah okay all right so will your next next week sorry yeah that expires next week yeah okay so you're in one q q q and you and you are in one spy or you're not excuse me no uh oh. sorry my name's it's q's yeah okay so you're in one q's and you didn't do disney why didn't you do disney again i think i just missed the trades the time difference and stuff oh, i got okay. it yeah but I think um, I'm going to try and do, because like when you call the options, you might call three a week, and I might just do one. Okay. You know why? Because I don't like having too many trades on. I just like having one. That's okay. That's all right. That's all right. I mean, I'm perfectly fine with that. But it is going to be earnings season, so I may be calling more, you know, because of earnings season. So maybe you want to do two, you know, or something a week because it's earnings season. You know, and if I call one in the market, do a market one and do a stock one because of the fact that there is going to be more trades because it's earnings season. But if you're going to do one, I would do the market ones because I've been calling some of the good, some of the trades in the market have been pretty good now. But this Disney is going to be huge here today. So, and this isn't earnings. So, but earnings are starting now. Like the banks reported this morning, like JP Morgan is up. I haven't rated any of these yet, but I'm just saying like, I would definitely, definitely maybe do a, a few more in the next, you know, two months do two a week if you just I mean two on shouldn't kill you to have two trades on you know no I agree I think it's the fear just having two and just trying to I don't know I just like one I think that's very safe for me but two's good you're right with the earning seasons there's just more opportunity yeah there's Mm -hmm. going to be more opportunity and you want to make money and if you happen to pick one that doesn't work then I could call five and four work and the one dozen or something. So then you don't want to get frustrated. And that's, again, not a product of you not having confidence or whatever. It's just the, 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 the odds. You know, the odds are the ones that work and the ones that, that, that don't work. But anyways, I mean, so do you, do, you, do you feel confident in your chart reading abilities? Um. I do actually. I just need a bit more practice, but it's more the targets and when to get out. So, say for example, the cues. I feared the cues, so I got out yesterday, but now they've gone up one eighty six. So I would have made a bit of money on that one. So yes, more yeah. The exit, I think. Yeah. So you got out of it because it was red yesterday, is that, or because of the expiration date was today? 
Yeah, because I got out, it was a little bit red. I think it was fourteen dollars down, which isn't a big. It's no, a, yeah, that's basically break even. Yeah, and then um, and then I know as it as the week as the days come closer to expiry, the options become a little. Well, it depends. The options become a little. Um, yes. Less of value. Yes. So I noticed that too. So if it goes to 105, then it's actually, you lose out a bit more than what you would have. So I like to exit early before options expire. I noticed that pattern. Well, I don't, if you're, if you're something like this, because there was, you know, there was the banks reporting this morning. My expectation was that the market could get a lift on the very last day for these ones. But it, you know, either way you could take, I don't know if you're taking one or two. If you take two, you could kill one. And hold one is another idea, you know what I mean, on something like this. Um, but if you're only doing I, one, you can't do that. You mean the quantity? So yes. you could buy one by two. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. That's another that's another idea. If you're I mean, just I mean, on any of the trades, even if it's not right up into the expiration, say you do a trade, like some people I know got out of Disney with profit back this day here that did it and they're going to kick themselves in the butt this morning but like if you you know sometime you could if you take two or any quantity at all that's yeah. more than two you could get out of some when it's up a little and then you can you can also then hold some to the to a bigger number so that you're saying you're worried about the targets well that's a way to kind of do a happy medium and then what you could do is you could track it and see what ones do go to the bigger targets, you know. So you could either do one of two things: either ta start taking two, hold one, get out of one as soon as it's up, hold one, or you can just start getting out of everything when it's up right away, is not holding anything, and then track what is going to the bigger numbers, and then determine maybe if you want to start to hold some of them. Not every, not all of them do though. And that's part of where the chart reading again comes into play with it because like Lulu, I don't know if you probably didn't do Lulu then if you're only doing one a week, but Lulu ran up that first day and then didn't act right at all then that second day. And then all of a sudden, oh, surprise, surprise, it did go in to be positive at the very last at the very last day, which was odd. But I mean, if you look at this one here, like it was clear that this wasn't right in here in the first two days. Like it shouldn't, that's not what I thought it would do, you know? When you call them, I do actually watch them and just monitor them and just see, oh, I should have gotten that, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, did you do Costco was another big one? Or did you do that one? No, I didn't do that one. That was a fail. No, I didn't do that one either. Oh I had something God. fun. <laughs> You're hilarious. What about, what about Ulta? No, I didn't do that one either. Oh, my enjoyed... gosh, Diane, you're not doing any of the big ones. I know. That's the thing. I seem to be missing out on the good ones. I mean, I should be thankful for getting a bit of profit, but it feels yeah. like I've got a bit of a slow mm -hmm. um, Yeah. Yeah, so I've just got to flip that switch. You know, so you reckon just reading the charts a bit more and just becoming a bit more. What? What? How did you – How did? How did it – because you mentioned you were losing money and then all of a sudden it's clicked. Is that because just – persevering, just reading the charts, etc. Well, I mean, I, at the beginning, I, I didn't understand what I was doing, you know what I mean? So it was a period of not understanding what the what, what the charts were telling me. So that's, you know, once, and then, it, like I said, it was about three years to develop my system. So for me, and the greatest piece of it is, the biggest part of it is ha having understanding what the gaps are telling me in the information and what ones are good and what ones are not good. So for me, that was the biggest, the biggest piece of it that, that obviously when people are starting out, if they don't have a strategy, then they're all over the place. I will say that having a good mental positive attitude, believing in yourself, all of that is definitely key. But really, you still won't make money in the market if you don't have a good strategy, even if you, even if you have all the confidence in the world. Because obviously, like for example, if you were short, short Disney here, you would be down a lot of money no matter what today, you know, so you have to have a, you have to have the strategies, the meat and potatoes, and then the confidence part of it adds on to that to make you stronger and doing it. But I've always been a confident person, but at the beginning I didn't have the strategy. So that's what took a long time to figure out. But I mean, the fact that I was confident did help me persevere through the ups and downs of it, realizing that, wait a minute, this doesn't make any sense. I've got to be able to figure this out kind of thing. And then the, the wanting it, wanting it, wanting it. 
for you, maybe just talking to you here and again, it's the first time we're ever speaking. My just my take on you is that maybe you're a little bit too uh, tepid. You're a little bit too, you know, tippy toe. You know, I, I think I, that's why I'm saying like, you know, I, I don't think doing two trains a week is good. It's like jumping off a cliff. So I think you need to kind of like be a little bit more full on, not go crazy with your risk or whatever. But and but I'm saying like you're a little too tippy toe. So, you know, it's the and part of that is you can't spend five days a week doing it right now. You have the time zone things and you have your job. So I think you need to get a little bit more into it. And even though it's safer for you to be doing one and like kind of just thinking it through, I think you need to push yourself a little bit more because, you know, you'll, you'll, you'll feel then stronger by doing that. And again, two trades a week is not, you know, even if you would lose in two trades a week, that's not the end of the world, you know? So, I mean, and I'm not saying you're gonna, because I've been making some great calls. So I think you need to push yourself a little bit more is what I'm saying. Yeah. You're right. And the, I mean, your strategy works. I can see it, it works. The thing is, just got to be a bit more committed and just have a routine, I think. Just a routine as in, oh, well, we'll do two or three trades a week. And uh, I mean, your like... goal was very reasonable. I forget what you told me your goal was last year. It was so reasonable. I, it was like you wanted to make $1,000 a month or something. I don't know. It was really reasonable what your goal was. To start off with, yeah. 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 So, I mean, mm -hmm. you should be making that right now with the calls I've been doing. Mm. But you're not doing all the trades. Well, I'm not doing all the trades, and you know I'm very up and down at the moment. Like it's up and then it's red, it's green and then red and green and red and up, mm -hmm. up and down. Mm -hmm. So like you, like what did you have at risk in the queues? Like what was your price in this? You said you killed it and lost fourteen bucks. What did you pay for that one? Yeah, I'll just look at my knife. Sorry, as it cats here. Um, queues was. I paid ninety three cents at, and I bought it at one eighty three sixty nine. Mm -hmm. When was that? That was Thursday. That was Thursday last week. That's right. Yeah, yeah. So it was about a week ago. Okay. So you then paid. Quite, you paid. So you had two or one that you paid ninety three cents for. No, I bought one. Yeah. One okay. For not so yeah. what would have been the la the worst thing in the world if you had held this? Worst thing in the world would have happened is you would have lost ninety three dollars. True, true. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, worst thing in the world. Now, obviously, if you'd held this to today, this would have been positive. But you'll be up in the other one that you took. That's fine. Um, but I'm just saying, like, kind of maybe think of it like that. Like, this is what I'm saying. Like, push yourself a little bit. Like. I think you're you're so you're you're almost like you're almost like shy about it now because of the losses that you took before you found me and over the years, and so like we're talking about 2018 that still sticks in your mind the, the that seven thousand dollars. So you're almost like so shy now. Like now you're learning what to do, but you're like so shy. You're like dumbstruck because of all the things that happened in the past. Now that now that you're doing something that's good and I'm calling good trades, you're like. Trade after trade, it's working. You're missing them. You're not doing them because you're kind of like, you're kind of like a little bit scared about uh, because of the things that happened like umpteen years ago or like 2018, February 2018, which was, you know, over a year ago. So you need, that was a different place. It was a different time. You're a different person now. It's a different year. And you took my class and I'm calling good trades and everything is different. It's not even re remotely the same. So you need to kind of look at it like that. So you're, you're saying, well, I, feel like hesitant because of these things that happen but none of those things even matter anymore does that make sense yeah it makes sense yeah because it got burnt so i'm just a bit, a bit um fearful of that i think but just because you got burned in the past doesn't mean you're going to get burnt now you got burnt before you did my class you got burnt before you started getting my trades you don't want to let this whole year go by where you're in the room and on the letter of me calling these trades and then all of a sudden, it's the end of 2019, and you're like, oh, crap, I should have done more of the trades. You know what I'm saying? Well, that's what I'm worried about because, you know, I'm just not really committed yet. You know what I mean? I just don't. Um, but, you, but you don't have to 100% commit yourself five days a week and quit your job right now. Doing a, doing a, a, Taking five more steps forward or two more steps forward, like I said, doing two more trades or whatever, that's not throwing, you know, that's not jumping off a cliff. That's, that's still... 
just moving a little bit forward where you should still feel in a safe zone. And trust me, it's not going to take that long. If you had done Disney, maybe this is all you would have needed. I mean, I don't, I don't even know what this is going to open at today or be worth at this point. But if you had done Disney, it was the 120 strikes. It's $4 through the strike, and it's got two more weeks left. So God knows what this will be worth. So if you had done this trade and made two grand, just risking a little bit of money, I don't, again, I don't know if that's what it's going to be worth. But I'm just saying that you might only need something like that to help your confidence really get a boost. But you're not allowing that for yourself because you're, you're being too shy about taking the trades. Yeah, my plan was an options trade and a day trade to get, get a bit more experience and confidence in both. Okay. That was what I would like to do. So, um, well, that's, that, that yeah. balance the system. And then I wanted to do your other course, which was the options one, pending time zones and all that business. So, yeah, that was my plan. Yeah, I mean, I think that you, you're not doing bad. You think you're doing bad because you feel like you're not making a progress, but you're really just... I just think you're overthinking doing a lot of the trades. Um, and I think you're definitely, definitely, definitely thinking too much about things that happened in the past. The past is not now. Now is now. The future is not the past either. And the future isn't even now. But the future is going to look exactly like now where you're not where you want to be if you don't stop thinking about the past. I feel like I'm mentally in a better place because I'm more, I'm not, you know, when I put on trades in the past, it was more fearful, but now that fear's not there. It's just a bit more confidence when I'm actually doing the trade. It's mm -hmm. more when I get out and I'm a bit um, not sure of how long to keep them. Because I could have, you're right, I could have kept the cues until today, but then, you know, I just thought, no, I'm going to lose money. No, $14 is a lot better than 93, I guess. But, well, that's um, true. And you took another one. You took another one. So if the market rallies today, if the market rallies, so what are you going to do with this one? So you took another one here, even though I didn't call a Q's trade yesterday, you took it. What are you going to do with this one? If this runs up today to 187, 188 or whatever, you could be up a hundred bucks or whatever. Are you going to get out of it or what are you going to do with this? Oh, if it goes up to 187, I'll close the trade and be happy with the profit to take that. Because you know what? I discovered you're right about being in the trades a short time, get the money and out. Because what I found yeah. is when I stay too long, you know, it's there's too much of um, there's too much of a, I guess, a, a gap, too much of a space to allow for it to go down. And then you can't recover because then, and then I hold on to it too long. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I've observed that as well. No, so I like to be in trades one or two days, three days. I'm happy if I've got profit, I'm happy. Um, so just to build up that confidence and I guess the balance. Yeah. yeah, I mean, if you are risking 100 bucks on average, you should be trying to make 100. But if you can make $50, like in the first half an hour, an hour, even in the options trades, you could trade them like day trades and get out and just do the next one. And maybe you can, if your thing is really you're concerned about being in like five at one time, then maybe you could do one, get out, then do the next one and then get out, then do the next one and hold it. Like you could be more, what I'm saying is maybe you need to try to be a little bit more active. Even, I, I, what, I'm not saying do everything in the planet. I'm just saying be a little bit more active because one, it's earning season. Two, I'm calling good trades. And three, you need to almost test yourself. This is like a test period for you. Are you really... Are you really having confidence problems or it's that you're just not booking the money, but it's impossible to book the money if you don't take the trades. So, I mean, it's kind of like, do you know what I mean? Like maybe your confidence isn't that bad, but you're not doing the trades. So, I mean, like this is like a test period where you're testing yourself. Is it really, is it really that your confidence? Are you really scared or is it just that you're just not it, doing them? Yeah, because you're right, actually. Um... It's more the um, being more involved in practice, I guess, and, and um, being more involved. And, um, yeah, you're right. I have to do something about that. Maybe just um, what do you do? You, you, you have visions of what you want to achieve. Is that you set yourself the intentions up? Or? I would do that for yourself even on a very small scale, like even between now and May 31st. Say, okay, then between now and the, the Memorial Day holiday or whatever it is, you know, just between now and the busy season where it's earning season, I want to make this much money and just have it out there and visualize it and be, be specific about it. You could say, I want to make this much money between now and then. I'm going to do, you know, two positive trades a week or what? just be, pick something 
and b- visualize and be specific. Sometimes it's hard for people to take on too many things in their mind if they're not used to doing manifestation or visualization. Just have something in your mind, but make it concrete. Not don't just say, well, I want to get better. It's all, that's like not specific enough. You could say, well, I want to make $2,000 between now and May 31st trading doing options and day trades and I want to you know gain my, and build up my confidence or if that's going to build your confidence I don't know I don't know what it's going to take to build your confidence but I know that losing $14 and making $100 is probably not enough because because you need to become more involved in doing it and then the number one thing also which is not manifesting anything but it's just being aware of it in your mind when you start to go through the mental anguish of the things that happened in the past when those things come up you got to just nip it in the bud and stop thinking like that right away just say oh i don't know why i just thought about that that was crazy because when you keep thinking about those things even if you're not aware of it subconsciously it is affecting your ability to be able to be everything that you can be right now because those things keep coming up. You can call it fear, you can call it hesitation, you can call it whatever. The money that you lost, the $7,000, the money you lost in the past is gone. It's just gone. And you're never gonna make it back from the market or you're never gonna move forward and make more than you lost if you don't start to become just living right now in this moment and doing the trades. Because trade after trade, like Ulta, Costco, Disney, all these trades are gonna go and go and go and go and go, and you're not gonna do them and you're not gonna have the money and you're gonna see that it works, but you gotta feel it. And the only way to feel it is to really, is to do it. Sometimes you'll feel pissed off though if a trade doesn't work and you take a loss. If you had held the cues and then we gapped down today and you would've been down $100, you might've kicked yourself in the butt for holding it saying, oh gosh darn it, I could've, killed that for 14 bucks and I lost 93. But you but you just get over it. You get over it in that moment. You say, oh, I shouldn't have done that. Why did I do that? That was crazy. But then that's it. You let it go. You can you can beat yourself up for five minutes or a half an hour, but you can't beat yourself up for, for things that you did in 2018. And that's what, you know, I heard heard you saying. I didn't know what I was doing and I lost that money and do 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 you know, don't, you're, you're beating yourself up. You're working against yourself when you're saying things like that. Beat yourself up for five minutes if you feel like you need to do it. But that's it. Then you let it go. All right, good. Okay. All right, so the market's open half now, so you need to get to your room. Yeah, I need to get going here for the room, but be in the room today, okay? We'll, get, we'll do. All right, I'll see, speak to you shortly. All right. Thanks. It was great talking to you. Bye, Nancy. Thank you. Okay, bye-bye. Thank you.